Hey, Friendly Neighborhood Immunologist here, and today we're going to talk about the side effects you could experience after receiving the COVID mRNA vaccine. I would know, my husband and I signed up for the Phase 3 Pfizer clinical trial way back in August. He had the vaccine. The most side effects he experienced was about six hours of night chills. I didn't have anything, thought I was in the placebo group, and then found out in February that was true. So my first shot, all I had was a little bit of injection site soreness and fatigue. The second shot was a completely different beast. So about 12 hours after receiving it. So I got my shot at two in the afternoon and then two o'clock at night, I started having night chills and they lasted about six hours. And then I had a fever of 102 for about 12 hours. And I kept telling myself, this is a good thing. The fever, the muscle aches, the chills. This is a good thing because you are making buku antibody. Your immune system is working so hard to protect you if you ever encounter the COVID virus. So that's what I'm gonna share with you. Why are fever, muscle aches, and chills such a good thing? I'm gonna show you why. And then at the very end, I'll tell you about two symptoms you absolutely should not ignore. Let's get started. So this is what it's like to receive the second vaccine. I'm gonna draw a syringe, and the syringe is going to be containing the mRNA vaccine. The mRNA vaccine is actually in bubbles of fat, otherwise known as lipids. And if you want to know specifics, it's actually polyethylene glycol, or PEG. And I'm drawing these circles with little wavy lines to represent the mRNA. Now, when these fat bubbles meet with your immune cells, or actually even just your regular old cells in your tissue of your arm, they're going to merge. The fat bubble in your cell, all of your cell walls are actually made of cholesterol, so go ahead and eat that almond butter avocado toast. It's all those healthy fats for you. Ooh, or maybe dip a bread in olive oil. Sorry, getting distracted. So here, the mRNA can now enter your immune cells. It can enter any immune cell, really. It can enter the dendritic cell, it can go into the macrophage, and the mRNA is going to wander around and wait for your macrophage to turn it into a protein. And if you recall, the mRNA vaccine contains just the code for the outside of the virus. So the spike protein is how the COVID virus enters your cells, specifically lung and intestinal cells. And the uh, code here is just for that outside part. So no virus, no protein, just the mRNA code that your cell then turns into a protein. Now, something exciting happens after the protein is created. Your immune cells have pattern recognition receptors. They actually have these internal and external uh, ways to detect viral and bacterial patterns. So once your immune cells have created the COVID spike protein, it can bind and activate either internal or external detectors known as pattern recognition receptors. And when that happens, you're gonna make inflammation. What kind of inflammation? You are going to make cytokines, which are small proteins that immune cells use to talk to one another. They can also use cytokines to actually boost themselves up, uh, which is a smart thing to do. So here's some cytokines for you. They'll also make hormone-like molecules. Now, why would you want to make a hormone-like molecule? Because hormones can cross through all kinds of different barriers and hormones can travel through your bloodstream long distances.
All right, so this is your bloodstream right here. And the bloodstream can take this inflammation and bring it to your brain. So here's step one, receive the second vaccine. Step two, your immune cells are going to crank out cytokines and hormone-like molecules, which will enter your bloodstream. And now you might be wondering, how is this different than the first vaccine? So I'll tell you how. There's supporting cells there. The first vaccine activated T cells, if you recall. Um, if you're not familiar with this, you might want to check out uh, my video about the COVID mRNA vaccine. There's T cells and there's B cells, the types of immune cells that produce antibodies. Little Y-shaped molecules that act as nets to bind up and prevent COVID from entering your cells. And B cells and T cells are able to also produce cytokines and chemokines, as well as hormone-like molecules. So that basically means that the first vaccine, you really only had the cytokine response from your innate immune cells, like macrophages and dendritic cells, but the second time, you had some memory T and B cells, possibly even like active effector T and B cells that were ready to contribute and basically really boosted the cytokine and hormone-like molecule response. So when all of these cytokines and hormone-like molecules pour into the bloodstream, they float around your entire body and at some point they're gonna get to the brain. And if they're in a high enough level they will cross the blood-brain barrier and can enter deeper brain structures like this little guy right here. This is your hypothalamus. Literally means below your thalamus. And why do you care? This actually regulates hunger and thirst and sleep, so you can actually blame a lot of things on your poor hypothalamus. But most importantly for us, this regulates your body temperature. So when macrophages, dendritic cells, T cells, and B cells all combine their powers, they can send so many cytokines and hormone-like molecules into your brain that the hypothalamus realizes that you need to crank up your body temperature. And when you crank up your body temperature, you get a fever. Crank up that body temp. Okay. So when you crank up your body temp, what actually happens is your neurons uh, tell your muscles to shake. And after your muscles have been shaking for several hours, you're definitely going to ache. Neurons tell your muscles to shake, and then you're going to get that ache. So now you have a fever, chills, and muscle ache, all because your immune cells have cooperated to tell your hypothalamus to crank up the body temperature. And now I'm gonna tell you why that's a really good thing. Okay, so after your hypothalamus has sensed those cytokines and hormone-like molecules and has started to raise your body temperature, you're gonna feel those chills and muscle aches because the neurons in your brain are telling your muscles what to do and they're telling them to shake but this is a good thing because when this happens, your bone marrows start to crank out so many more immune cells for you. So you have a lot more soldiers on your side for the battle against COVID-19. Your immune cells work better. They're able to destroy things like viruses, which can get inside of them. T and B cells make more copies of themselves. So after the first vaccine, you had probably a good number of copies, perhaps in the hundreds to thousands. And now you probably have closer to 10,000 or more of the type of B and T cells that recognize COVID. And on top of that, it means you have more antibodies to bind up COVID before it ever accesses any of your cells. And then number four, B and T cells have greater memory of COVID-19. This is fantastic, this is essential. Again, this is being measured right now. We don't know if people are covered for six months, two years, 10 years, but the second shot makes sure that your T and B cells have greater memory. And fever, chills, and muscle aches tells me that all four of these things are happening in your body, and that's good. 
All right, now you know why fever, muscle aches, and chills are actually a great thing, and they mean your immune system is working to protect you. But there's two things you do need to worry about. If you have any type of allergic reaction in the past to a vaccine, you should let your doctor know. Uh, some people are experiencing a rare side effect of having a low-level allergic response, so some type of swelling, perhaps even um, issues breathing. So there is a 30 minute waiting period after each vaccine and the type of allergic reaction that would appear would happen within these 30 minutes. So most people are safely under the care of medical professionals during that time. But the most rare, I mean, I'm talking like one in 10 million chance. And if you don't know what that means, it basically means you are 20 times more likely to be struck by lightning. So this is super rare but three people have died from thrombocytopenia, and the symptoms of that are bleeding, fainting, and easily bruising, as well as extreme fatigue, like unable to get out of bed. And if you're experiencing these, or if you have a family history of platelet disorders or blood disorders, you should talk with your doctor before you receive the vaccine. So if you're interested in figuring out why um, thrombocytopenia happened, please click on the next video. And if you want to know why you absolutely should not pregame or take Tylenol before the vaccine, check that out too.